In this video, we're going to be answering a subscriber question. It was asked, Cameo Magic, if I am looking to do a software modeling for an embedded system, how can an opaque behavior or some kind of action receive two inputs that are data structures formed by two or more data elements, parse them into their individual data elements, and via some logic, aggregate them into a new data structure as an output. In essence, I need to learn how to model software objects and software functions to show our software design before we start coding and creating our signal definitions. Can you make a video on how to model interactions at the computer software configuration item level down to the CSU level? So here's some context for the CSCI and the CSC, CSU. Um, and then I'll kind of point you to these other videos, uh, methods to pass and parse data over interfaces. This can be really helpful, as well as this example walkthrough, which has how to use operations. And this video, we'll be going through some other methods that uh, specifically answer this question here. So moving on to the example that we're going to show, we have our system context with our IMU sensor, our GPS sensor, and our merge unit. Essentially, we're going to be moving some packet of information from the IMU to the merge unit and from the GPS to the merge unit like this. And then once we get to the merge unit, we're going to be putting the uh, data structures together. So this is our IMU data packet. This is our GPS data packet. And then this would be our merged nav data, which is going to be mapping some of the values from the IMU and GPS into this merged nav data packet. So that's what we're going to be showing. Um, we've got our system context here, which we will run in simulation. And you'll see there's a lot of detail underneath each of these activities here, um, but we'll just show what's happening at the high level. So that was it. Um, what we did is we've sent specific IMU sensor data and specific GPS sensor data from here and from here to here to be merged. And then we print the merged output to the screen or the console. And that's what you're seeing here. So now we'll look into our IMU sensor activity in more detail. So that's what this is. We have our create object action, which you can click on here, go to any action and go to create object. And you can select that and add it to the screen. This right here is going to be pulling our IMU data packet and creating a new one. So if I go into the specification, you'll see that the classifier is IMU data. Then you will send that empty IMU data packet, which is going to look like this, to the add structural feature value action. And again, I'll find all of these special actions right here. So I can just go to add and then add structural feature value action. For this guy, I'm just going down the list of value properties and adding them one at a time. So go to the specification. You see that the context is going to be the IMU sensor because that's the input. And then I'm going to drag the Excel X as my structural feature here. And then I'm going to add an input value pin to become, um, to, to set the value. So, and then this right here is going to be setting the value. So the value specification, you find that by just going here and then go to value specification, value specification action. 
and I've given it a name, um, acceleration X value of value is one. So I've filled in these two fields and then the result, it's going to send that one value to this add structural feature. Um, so we're essentially doing that four separate times for each of the value properties. And once we've added each of these values, it will be fully complete and ready to be sent out. So I'll go ahead and simulate that now. So it's empty at the beginning. Now we've added Excel X and Excel Y. Now we've added the Z. Now we've added the timestamp. Now you'll notice that once it got to here, it's essentially done. And if I look into my variables tab, you'll be able to see my IMU data. This has completely filled out with all of my values and it's being sent out of this activity, which is as I intend. So this is exactly what I'm going to do with the other data. So the IMU and the GPS are going to look identical. The only thing that's going to be different is instead of pulling all these value properties for the IMU, I'm going to be pulling these value properties for the GPS. So again, we start with our create object um, action and then we send it in. So it's, it's empty, um, send it in, and then we start setting the values for each of the value properties. And I'll run this. Notice there's nothing here at, at the beginning. And I'll push play. And you can see the, the data being sent. And you can see now there's two values that are populated. Let me get this down here. It will have the velocity value applied. And then when it gets down here, it has them all applied. And then you see the little plus is available to us now because that data is being sent. So this is the data packet as we anticipated. So now that we've talked about both of these, we're going to talk about the merge unit. The merge unit is going to be taking both of those packets and then putting them together. So looking at the merge, this is what we have. So the, the packet of data, GPS data and IMU data needs to be parsed essentially. And so that's what we're gonna be doing. We're taking the GPS data right here and then doing the read structural feature and we'll read the each of the value properties. So if I look into the read latitude, we've named it read latitude and we've added the structural feature of latitude, which is gonna be coming from our GPS data. So latitude would be there and then here would be longitude, which would be here. And then th these guys for uh, read acceleration at X, acceleration X, that's going to be with the IMU data. So we're just reading each of the value properties independently. You'll notice we have this create object here. We are pulling in the final data package that we want, the merge nav data. 
So this is what we're going to be adding to. So we have all of these value properties empty at the beginning. And then we start setting each of the value properties one by one and then setting them with the values that have been read from our input IMU data and input GPS data. So for right here, we're reading in the Excel X, Excel Y, which we want as a acceleration um, of two, so an array of two. So we want it to be X and then Y. So I've changed the multiplicity of this pin to two so that it will accept two inputs. And so it'll pull these two in and then set the acceleration appropriately. And then we've got the, the yaw rate, which is going to be this uh, value property right here. And we've done the same for the position, which is going to be latitude, longitude from our GPS data. So and then velocity and then timestamp. You could certainly add some transformations if you'd like using opaque actions and you could essentially manipulate these values if you needed to like convert units or um, do some other calculations. Notice we just took the GPS data's timestamp as king and just kind of threw away the IMU data's timestamp. That's just for simplicity sake. So now I'll rerun the entire thing in simulation again. Notice that this time I've expanded each of the activities so we can see them in detail. So this is the IMU, this is the GPS, and then over here we've got our merge sensor data. So now I'll push play. You see that it's starting with this guy and then that kicks off this activity. And you'll see the values appropriately adding the values to the initial IMU empty data packet. So now it is fully filled out and that IMU data packet, which is completed is sent out right here. Now we'll do the GPS. So we start with the empty GPS packet. Right here, and now we'll add latitude and then longitude and then velocity and then GPS timestamp. And we'll send that packet out as well. Both of these will then input into the merge unit which we'll scroll over here. So we've got a fork node to essentially read all of the value properties that we care about from our GPS data and our IMU data. We're creating the merge nav data packet, and then we're starting to add the appropriate values to each of the variables or value properties in our empty merge nav data packet, which would be these value properties. And then we have appropriately added that and it's being sent out. And you'll see that then we print it out to the screen right here, the console. And this is just a stall. Uh, it, it's a, uh, um, time event that just telling us to wait because that's kind of the end of our simulation. So hope that example helped explain the entire path and how to manipulate these data packets and send them from one block to another block. Um, you can certainly make this much more complicated. If you want to do transformations, you can use opaque actions to do that. Um, please Go ahead and download this uh, file. It's 
The project file is available on our website for you to download. So I'll send the, I'll add the link into the chat below. Thank you.